From creating and rigging a bipedal skeleton to setting up a dynamic simulation, that's quite a leap between disciplines. We're going to switch gears here and work on another asset in our scene, the lava lamp. I modelled the lamp in a previous course, so now comes the fun part, setting up the dynamic simulation for the wax. The lava lamp consists of several parts, the cap, the glass globe, the base, and a rudimentary light bulb, which we can see in the base, here. According to the reference image, we need some gloopy purple wax. And, as is the case with lava lamps, we need it to rise and fall. And to achieve that, we're going to use a dynamic simulation. So let's get set up. First of all, I'll hide that reference image for now, which I can do in the layer editor right here. Let's frame the glass globe, since that's where we're going to build our simulation. I'll hide the bulb, base and cap, since we don't need to see them just yet. OK. We're going to use a particle simulation base to create our hot wax, so let's switch menus to the effects menu. Now, as always, I could also use the marking menu to get to those same menus. I generally end up using a combination of both, though. I'll also switch the shelf to the FX tab, which gives us a quick way to access certain functions. Maya's particle generation system is known as N-Particles, which, incidentally, uses Maya's Nucleus framework, the same framework that also drives Maya's N-Cloth simulations. Pretty much all the tools we need are under the end particles menu, here. First thing we need to do though is select the type of particle simulation we want, which can be found under create options, here. We can choose from point, balls, cloud, thick cloud, or water. I'm going to use water for this simulation. OK. I'll select the object we want to fill, which in this case is the glass globe. And under the End Particles menu again, select Fill Object Options. As always, I'll reset the tool first. OK. I'll leave everything as is except for the resolution, which I'll crank up to 30. Actually, let's make that 28. That should be good. And hit Particle Fill. Great. Let me just close the Particle Fill Options window. OK. The globe is now filled with blue spheres that represent our water particles. Now, by hitting the play button, the simulation will run. So what happens if we play the simulation now? Let's find out. Gravity kicks in and all the particles just fall straight down through the glass globe. Not really what we want. We need to tell Maya that the globe is a solid object that the particles need to react to. In other words, we need to make the globe a collision object. So with the globe selected under the end cloth menu, actually let's select that from the marking menu for a change. And select create passive collider options. Not many options this time, just the name of the solver to select. And since we only have one simulation or one solver, that's the only option available. So all we need to do now is hit make collide. Okay, so what happens now when we run the sim? The particles drop once again, but this time they all collect in the bottom of the globe, just like water would do. Nice. But we don't want to start the simulation at the point where all the particles are evenly distributed throughout the globe. We want it to start where everything's settled in the bottom. And we'll look into solving that next. <laughs> 